Now, that is a huge opportunity. Uh, but is anybody uh, talking about that? No, they're talking about gay marriage and everything else on earth that really doesn't fundamentally uh, affect the future. Uh, but the idea that we might get the resources uh, to uh, take our water and reuse it and take our groundwater and use it uh, is going unnoticed, except for a few picayune environmental organizations that are actually opposing the bond issue because there's something in there that they don't like. They don't seem to realize in a democracy, a compromise is the name of the game to get anything passed, but here is the opportunity of a lifetime uh, to really put some real money into reusing our water resources and, 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 and using them, and yet uh, this is coming up and uh, it's likely to go down to defeat unless the people that know something about it uh, get, get political. You know, uh, I went to engineering school, I went to Georgia Tech, and I know the attitude of most engineers that politics is dirty. Well, it's going to keep being dirty unless we put it, get into it ourselves. Uh, because, uh, frankly, uh, Churchill said it very well. Democracy is the worst form of government known to mankind, except for all the others. And, uh, you know, it might, not, it might not be as clean as one plus one equals two, uh, but unless we get involved in it, uh, it's going to get dirtier and dirtier. And uh, it's the only way that I know of that we could do collectively uh, what's in, in the interest of the people. We formed the United States of America uh, so we could get free of foreign oppression and, and have some fundamental, do some fundamental things we can't do ourselves. We've done quite a bit. We built a highway system. We've gone to the moon. Uh, we've won World War II. Uh, uh, this country is capable of doing a lot of things collectively, and this city is, and the state is. But it won't do that without the active participation of the folks that know something about the subject matter. And right now, uh, water is in the hands of people that are just shooting their mouth off, mainly. Uh, the opportunities, uh, and the opportunities for this group in, in uh, recycling and reuse of water, I think is the largest uh, job-making opportunity uh, imaginable. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's the one issue I know of uh, where people who are truly interested in the environment and those interested in the business can join together in a common purpose. Uh, you know, uh, the, the idea of reusing our water is not a new idea, uh, it, it's, and it's not all that complicated. The technology is there, it's just going to require massive investments, and it's going to require bringing it to the attention of people. Most people in Los Angeles have no idea that they can, that there is technology where they could take some of the wastewater after it's used in their house and have it irrigate their lawns. They just don't know that's possible, and nobody's telling them. Yet it could be a giant uh, source of activity uh, for uh, uh, people that deal with pipes and things like that. Uh, also, the, gray, the, the, the purple pipes that would mo move the water all over the city is being built at a snail's pace, uh, whereas uh, it could uh, be built at a much more rapid uh, pace. And that's the fundamental answer. We're talking about in the state of investing $15 billion in putting a tunnel underneath uh, the uh, delta up there in north to assure water supply coming from the north. Uh, yet, if we really went to work on reusing our water, uh, we would find that we could become more and more self-sufficient. And that's without even mentioning the technologies uh, to save, uh, use water more efficiently. Uh, you know, uh, when I was the head of DWP, we gave away nearly a million toilets uh, uh, in, in this city. 
and it paid out because the cost of water uh, uh, that was saved would, would pay these things out in two or three years. That's still true today. The commercial establishments do not have these waterless toilets. And there are half a dozen technologies comparable to that that have now with water costing six, seven, eight hundred dollars an acre foot, uh, those technologies are more cost effective than ever. Yet, is there anybody from this profession that's coming to the city council and screaming at these people and calling them idiots for not going ahead with this? Uh, no, we are, we are just too damn polite, is the truth of the matter. And, you know, in the age of television, you get, a, you get yourself a big sign and get out on the street and the cameras uh, take pictures of you. And look what happened in Europe just the last two days. A bunch of uh, uh, folks in Greece got out on the street. The next thing you know, the banks are putting up a trillion dollars uh, to get Greece out of a hole. And believe me, uh, the, the, uh, the folks getting out on the street played a big role in that happening. You might not like it. You think it's uncouth. You think it's unfair. Uh, but it's not un-American. The First Amendment uh, guarantees us the right of speech. And I'm not saying that we have to get out in the street. I'm just using that as a metaphor. But we do have to open our mouths and shout because nobody's listening uh, to us right now. Uh, there, is, there is not a shortage of water in the state of California. We are just using it in the most wasteful manner imaginable. We're not reusing it, and we're not using it efficiently at all. I mean, and the truth of the matter is that we're selling water in the damn desert for two gallons for a penny. And people are belly aching about increases in the price of water. Yet these same folks go into a grocery store and smell a buck and a half or so for a bottle of the same damn water. Uh, and no one is telling them the difference. Now, uh, I, 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 you know, th this is not a new situation. Uh, you know, the most arrogant thing a guy can do is quote from his own work. So I hope you'll forgive me, but I, I had a few days off and I was cleaning out some old papers and I ran into this book of from 1973, and I gave a talk, and this is 37 years ago, and uh, I just, just to, I'm doing this because I think it's important for people to realize that we've let three or four decades go by without really doing anything significant about the problems. Uh, for example, uh, I was talking more about energy then, but the same thing applies to water. Uh, the Clean Air Act spoke of pure air, but air pollution is with the exception perhaps of burning leaves entirely a byproduct of energy consumption. We find as we try to implement the Clean Air Act that Detroit pleads one more year, the utilities cry, we can't, just can't do it. So here we are, three years later, listening to evidence that the air quality we breathe is impairing our well-being. Well, I can say the same thing today. We still have dirty air, and we don't have the technology to meet the standards of, 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 of clean air. Uh, and as I said, the awful truth is we don't possess the technology today to comply with the standards we've set for ourselves. The awful effect of the laws tend to constrain the production we need to make the wheels turn. 